Hey guys, uh, welcome back to my channel. I hope that all of you are safe through these uh, very sad moments on the world and in the United States for the lack of preparation on this government. But uh, I mean, stay home, be prepared for what is coming because this is a still not the war. So please stay, keep the distance, be safe. God protects us all. All right, guys, uh, welcome back to my channel. I am uh, working on a ECM here that has a, a crank no start. That's a complaint. This is Jim from, uh, let me see the information. I think I have it somewhere here. Let me see. That's right here. He's from Florida, Jim. This is your computer. So as far as as much as he told me, the computer has a crack no star and I was able to reproduce as usual. I have already set everything up so it's as quick as possible. I always said that I'm going to make a short video and end up being a very long video. So <laughs> I'm not going to say it this time, but I try to make good content for all of you guys. Hopefully it's, it's uh, something you like to see, especially right now that a lot of people is at home. So I think the good content, good to learn new stuff for those that are not mechanics or, or they had a problem with a computer uh, to uh, pinpoint a little bit and then send that over to, to people like me that can repair it. All right, so I have the simulator ready to go. So. As far as uh, wiring diagrams and everything, let me start the, um, make sure I'm in the display. Yep, on display capture, I'm going to start a capture right now so we can both see everything. I have the oscilloscope already ready to go. I have this on the right side because I'm getting, I have just update or upgrade my um, software on my Asus uh, laptop that I use for all this and it's giving me some time blue screen. I'm trying to see if he's, the actual computer getting hot or it's something run on Windows that always happens. That's what I always have Mac, but you know, with all these softwares and everything that they're only work with Windows, it's just, it, I have to. All right, so I have already the PDF uh, open, ready to go to show you, well, if they get open, okay, right here. So the first thing that I do, usually, as you know me, uh, this is an 8.1 liter engine. Um, so it's a B8, it's a very big engine. This is the pin out. Uh, so I usually do not have to come every time to this. I write what I need. So I need two grounds on pin 69 and 81. And yeah, let me go over to the next one so you can see. So 69, it says power ground. That is a ground that's, you know, the way this manufacturer uh, put them in here and then 81 which is in here, it says power ground. So I'm going over to powers. So it's 41, 45 is an ignition right here, 45 ignition uh, fed or feet. Um, then we have 60 and 79. So 60 right here, battery uh, feet one, and then 79 right here, battery feet two. Then the next thing that I need to communicate, which I also have a scanner for this one, uh, I cannot have both because, like I said, I got the blue screen and I don't want to lose the captures that I'm doing right now. Um, but those are in pins 55 and 56, as you can see here, serial data transmit and serial data receive. So this is what this computer uses. This is a still not a CAN network communication, which if I go back, I'm uh, sorry, not here. If I go back, to the page before, we can see can high, can low. These one are, are actually to communicate in between uh, sensors and modules on this setup the way this is. All right, so that's as far as the uh, connections. So I have also, no, that's not all, sorry. And then I have the camshaft position, the crankshaft position, the oil pressure sensor, the engine coolant temperature, throttle positions one and two, because this is a throttle body engine uh, and uses obviously two sensors to have a redundancy. So if one fails, it still it will give acceleration with reduced reduce power. 
if both uh, fails, it will shut down uh, injectors and, um, and coils, and I'm going to show you that in a second. I also have the map, uh, which is in pin 7, the uh, air temperature sensor on 39, all the injectors on pin 61 all the way up to 68. The firing order on this engine is A7, sorry, 1A72654.3. And will be the same for the coil for the injector. So I, hopefully I said injectors from pins 61 to 68, coils from uh, pins 31 to 38. These coils, so I've put all this information together for you too. These coils are four wire connector. And let me show you that here on the wiring and diagrams. So this is the wiring and diagram for this engine. As you can see, it's a it's a eight liter. So these are the connectors. It's, it's a two connection, but they go from one to 90, as you can see right here. So this is one to 15, 16 to 30, and then so on all the way up to 90. Uh, these are the harness for the injectors and the coils. And we can see that, you know, let's say connector 18. If we go here, it says the connector is 18, 18 is uh, ignition coil connector, 20 is ignition coil connector, and then 20 is the fuel injector connector. I also can go to the next page um, right here. And then we can see uh, that the connection for the coils is actually a four four wire connector. These are the injectors right here. So that's uh, also what I did. And then I also wanted to show that if we miss both of the total position sensors, very specific for this one, um, this is the 8.1 liter engine, engine shutdown. Engine shutdown is only used for DTC thir uh, 2135, a condition where both throttle position sensors are out of range and are given unreliable throttle position. In this case, the ACM does not have accurate throttle position information. And rather than have an un uncommanded wide open throttle, the ACM will, will shut off the fuel and ignition system. All right, so this is something to keep in mind. I do have both uh, uh, throttle positions uh, connected just in case. And then the next uh, PDF that I have here is just to determine which type of crank sensor, which does only need in, in for my simulator, the cam sensor on the engine when the engine is running. I don't have, you know, the spark or, or injectors that, you know, this is just, uh, I'm sorry, guys, I found something in my had our gun in there. So what I was trying to say, I don't really need to have a perfect timing in between them because I don't have a real injector firing or a real coil firing to be, you know, worry about, you know, you know, backfiring or nothing like that. But on the engine, when this is connected, the, cam, uh, the crankshaft in this engine is a 24X there has also a 4X reluctor in, in it. Let me actually just read that. I mean, you guys can can read it right here. Actually, no. The crankshaft on this one, on the 8.1, is a 24X. The camshaft is a 1X. So just to give that depth, uh, depth center, that top, that center on cylinder number one. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> it's a little early today. I just got breakfast, so or coffee, not breakfast, but yeah. So this is all the information that we need for here. I have the um, oscilloscope connected and ready to go. Hopefully this doesn't give me um, a blue screen. I got the simulator ready to go as well. Everything is connected. I have to be very careful with connections. There's a lot of cables, but I mean, that's just the way it is. It's always with this stuff. So I am selecting Sorry guys, I gotta stop the capture just a little bit to see if the angle is actually letting you see what I wanted to show and uh, it wasn't, so I'm glad that I did that. So let me start one second again, the screen recording. So I'm going to start the screen recording now. I should show that. Uh, okay. Um, so what I was trying to say, I have everything connected. I got to be really careful with a cable in here. So I am selecting just uh, one of the automatic waveforms in here to fit my purpose as far as crank uh, speed time. And so 
All right, let me run these. I have, I also wanted to, to say, um, when I turn this on, like right here, you need to have, like, let me remove this, because this is for an injector test that I want to do. So when you have a, a healthy computer that communicates, you need to have a lot, around 400 to 500 milliamps of uh, draw that indicates that the computer is not just powering the, the voltage regulator, but it's also able to communicate. If you have a very low amperage consumption on a computer, uh, that is a, uh, it's a, it's a bad sign that it has no communication. So this one is just a test slide that I got ready for uh, the injector test. I am selected my first one, which is a Bosch N154M. I fit my purpose. All my connections are just as I wanted. I have coolant temperature sensor, throttle position sensor, MAF, uh, intake air temperature sensor, the oil pressure sensor, the second TPM uh, throttle position sensor. I got an injector that I can change in there because each injector is going to need to be um, simulated in here because they're providing the computer provides a ground for an injector to activate. The coils on this car, uh, as we already said, is a four uh, wire, uh, or sorry, on this computer, is a four wire connector. So it's just going to be a zero to five square, uh, square waveform. It's not a regular activation for a coil since the driver itself is in the coil. Um, all right, no more talking and let's do this. So let me run this in here. I just got to change a little bit here to make sure I have the trigger in it high. And just got to change a little bit the, the RPM so we can see something. Um, as you can see now, it's a faster um, RPM and it's still I got nothing. And this is his problem. This is for Jim again. So we got a 12 volts on the injector, meaning there is no activation at all. And let's see if we have anything on the coils. No, we got a, no signal. Nothing in here. Yeah, the only thing that I can see is coils. So we have absolutely nothing on the coils itself. Um, I also did um, some reverse engineering uh, set up for the injectors, sorry, for the coils. Oh, this is starting to hurt my head. Sorry, guys, I need to change the position of the microphone a little bit. All right, so what I did is uh, I follow the traces on the board that I can uh, see. And on pin 31, which is again, one of the uh, coils, for, or 31 is, cylinder one coil then we have uh, capacitor uh, 471 ohm resistor then a protecting diode that will be there let me get a little close to this so you guys can see it so this is a protecting diode that in case something gets connected wrongly here it will take the hit because this is in here so if um, Probably the sign is reversed, but disregard that. So what this does is it doesn't allow any power greater than, let's say, you know, 10 volts that this chip in here can take to reach them. If it reaches, let's say, you know, 15 or so, it will drain through here to a point that if it's too much, it will just blow the the the, the diode to protect the tray to protect this. And that's usually what happens. Um, we have this chip in here that takes all the signals and, or it takes, sorry, all the signals from, like this is actually, I'm going in reverse, but that's how I do it. So we have from here, all those A coils going and, you know, controlled by the microprocessor, which I will show you in a second, from pins nine to 16 and activations that we don't have. So this is just the way they go. And this also has um, on this line that comes from this BHCT IC 
to the microprocessor, we also have a, another leg that goes through a series of resistors of 4.7 kilo ohms. This is just to protect the microprocessor itself. And then it has what the, uh, this is just a sensing to make sure that the coil is being activated. So it has, it's just not, um, because this will be, let's say, you know, making the signal go down. This provides a fiable reference in here. So this one, we'll see that it's uh, being put, oh, sorry, it's, it will be putting down the signal. And on this side, it will sense the actual square waveform to make sure that we have activation. And that's how they also the micro the microprocessor uh, takes control of the ignition and ejection time. And same thing I did for, for here. I'm not going to go too much on the injector driver to not take too much of your time. Um, so we got no activation on the uh, inject injectors or in the coils. Do I want to use the GoPro? Probably, right? Let me turn the GoPro. Try sometimes not to use too much the GoPro because a little pain in the neck. Trying to adjust it. If it that let me do it. What? And this is this this is now playing something I want I don't want to do. I want to zoom. Very bad software. I know somebody's gonna blame my glove, but. It's not. I try with bare hands, and it's the same thing. Sorry, guys. I'm taking too much time, but it's just the way it is. So hopefully, you guys can see this. I'm going to point at the microprocessor, which is a very basic one. This is a basic computer. So we have is a BS five two two three zero 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 one zero zero three zero zero. So that is the uh, microprocessor, and I already uh, identified the coils, and yeah, everything is on. I should see if we have that is running. I just want to make sure I can see that. Can you guys see it too? Yeah. So these are pins eight to sixteen. And we got absolutely no activation. So believe me, I have done this many times and I know what I'm talking about. That's what I open up in here exactly to see if we had any activation and we don't. So what I'm going to need to do is remove the microprocessor, but I got to take the um, information from and then pass it into the new processor or microprocessor. For that, uh, let me take you guys with me. I want to show you how I do that. I can clone computers. And so just to give you a close capture of everything we have there. Let me get a little less light because sometimes that is a little too bright. Yeah, it's probably a little better for the GoPro itself too. So that is the computer, and that's the micro that is in there now. And hopefully you guys can see, now I need to put a little more light right there. So in here, I remove that uh, clear gel, which I have, to protect that uh, the new uh, processor. But so what I wanted to show, how I transfer the information from that microprocessor. Um, let me put this away. I don't want to share information of customer. It's with the K tag. So I use the K tag. I have you know everything pretty much ready to go to set up that computer in there and transfer the information from the microprocessor to the other uh, to the other one. And for this, you use the JTAG uh, positions, which are right here. So that's what it is for there for programming and 
reading the calibrations and software you can do it uh, if you have the scanner and a dealer code you can do it without the nest you know necess uh, necessarily here but you know when you have a bad processor that's how you need to do it all right guys so let me remove that i don't want to take too much time from you so let me remove that i'm going to put the new one and then we go from there hey guys uh, okay welcome back and this is going to be probably in the same video I already replaced the microprocessor and program it. Uh, you know, I didn't want it to share that with you guys because otherwise it's just going to make the video too long. And that is actually really technical. That is not really necessary to share much. Uh, okay, so let me lower the intensity of the light so we can see a little better here. Too much is still. It's amazing how the cameras can capture light more than the naked eye. So. We have the new, uh, let me get in here. So the new uh, microprocessor in there. And this one is the old one. So I'm going to start with the testing to make sure that everything works. I have everything connected, ready to go. I have not started. Uh, let me put you guys back into the tripod. So bear with me one second. All right, so I can put that in a way. Got the other heat uh, board in here to remove and install. That's what I'm putting in that one in, in there, so it's not in my way. And make sure the cables are not shorting together because I got a lot of wiring going on in here. So let me get the scope app going before I start a um, no sort of old device. Oh, I disconnected it. So one second, guys. Connecting the scope to the laptop. If I can find a plug. All right, that's on. I can open the app again. All right. Let me start the screen recording so you guys can be with me here. I am selecting the screen and it is start recording and perfect I can lower that down so the settings that I use uh, for the Pico scope as a uh, extend probe that is the one the 6402 which is the oscilloscope from Pico scope comes with is uh, I think it's 250 uh, gigahertz now megahertz of frequency and I put a filter because this these ones are so um, for you know like really rapid uh, capture that get a little noisy if you don't apply a filter we can go up to 10 volts and that is ready All right now I'm going to turn this on go sign the amperage I need to plug this the slide in here too and run here run and I'm gonna change the settings in here to make it work and now let me give the RPMs and I already know it's working perfectly I have an injection pulse, which is a very good sign. So let me check the injector pulse in here. Oh, sorry, this is going to be, yeah, this is injector. It's a branch because that's going into a higher. Let me put a trigger so we can have a steady waveform. And let me change a little bit of the presets in here. 
Usually put like 10 megaseconds, is plenty. We're gonna just see one pulse. I have all the injectors, so I can disconnect this one here. And that one is there, you can see them both. I'm going to the third one, perfect. Ford injector. The fifth one, I can hear it on the machine right there perfectly. That's the sixth one, seven, and I'm sorry guys, and that's the eight. So all the injectors are in time. And it looks like we got like a five milliseconds uh, time, which we can corroborate in here. That um, simulator is pe pretty accurate to read that. And as you can see, we got 5.083 milliseconds. So it's very, very accurate. All right, so all injectors are good. Now let's check the ignition signals that we didn't have before. Remember, this is a zero five square waveform. So, let me put now cursors differently. We can go, what is the bottom line? So we got, yeah, it goes from zero to five volts. And that's one. That is the other one. Make sure we got all the coil activations, very important. The third one, four one, number five, six, seven, and eight. We got all the coils, we got all the uh, injectors working, so, this computer is completely working now, 100%, the way it is. This should run perfectly on, on the engine. So this is a good fix. Again, I like to put a test light. This is just a load that you need to use in order to see the activation, in this case, for the food injectors. And since this is just a trigger, um, how you call it? a trigger um, signal coming from the computer to the ignition coils because the driver is in the coil that's why it's a zero to five signal it's a square wave timing that's the computer will take care of that when you have the cam in the crank tied up center etc etc but this is this is it guys so um another thing that i want to say let me turn this off so i'm not going to create any um short but you can see that I push back all this gel. Let me disconnect this. I don't need it no more. So this gel can be reused. Is that what they call re-enterable uh, gel? I do have, and I show this in another video. I have this gel. This is from a company called Et Etilec or Etilac. This is from uh, Italy. They had this one is called the one gel, which is the same thing It's a crystal reenterable gel with all the same uh, attributes for, you know, vibration, electric, you know, it's built up to 500 volts electric, you know, for electricity. And they have another one that is called crystal gel. That's the one that you can mix and pour very liquidly. And then it will set in like 24 hours to become this gooey, which that's the, the way that the tube comes, but you can reuse it, it's, uh, it's reusable 100% and it's good, it's no lifetime on the shelves, you can have this for years, so it's, it's good. And uh, it has attributes like uh, from minus 60 Celsius to up to 200 Celsius on temperature, so this will also protect the computer to not get damaged in case an overheating situation on the engine because most of these computers are set up in the in the engine compartment. All right, guys, so I don't want to make this video extra long without necessity. I hope you guys like the video. And again, please, please stay home, stay safe. Let's all work together to go through this rough, very rough work 